All right, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Premier Division semifinals. Erlu vs. Meek. Uh, whoever wins this is going to go up to go up against either Tatanka or Mishi in the grand finals. Definitely check out that VOD if you haven't seen it yet. Twitch.tv slash Tander Draco. I don't want to spoil it. Uh, this is going to be good. Um, Erlu and Meek both have one Premier League championship under their belt, so they're fighting uh, for their second crown here. Uh, Meek, a little bit more of an aggressive player. Uh, he's, he's definitely uh, willing to, to reach into the bag of builds and, and come up with something creative. And, and Erlu always reminds me of just kind of a stonewall player, super solid, knows the timings. Uh, knows when to push. Uh, he, he's very unforgiving to play against. You, you make a small mistake, Erlun knows how to capitalize on it. So this is going to be a fun set. Uh, yeah, let's hop into it. Game number one here. All right, up top we've got Meek. And in the bottom right, Erlu. Okay, so Meek taking that Fox Balloon, which again is a little bit off. Uh, but I love it. And meanwhile, Erlu going with Wolf. Now, Wolf is something that players have been experimenting with. The folks that don't necessarily want to run the boar. Uh, the Wolf is kind of the second option. Um, I personally haven't seen it work too well against the boar pushes yet. Uh, but I have not seen every single game of Tooth and Tail, so there, <laughs> there's that too. But obviously, Erlu is confident in the uh, Wolf if he's going to take it a little bit. Ooh, that mine there uh, was fantastic. That's a really interesting way to deal with that. Uh, the mine hit takes out the mole. You don't have to sell the pig. And Erlu comes out ahead. He's got uh, his farms a little bit faster. Me going to follow up with the six farm more in here. Probably just for safety to make sure Erlu is not going to get aggressive after that. But yeah, I, I'm curious if Erlu has mostly just been running Wolf this season. If we're gonna see him run Boar, again, Erlu is kind of a, a Holy Grail player. Uh, he, you know, he finds a deck that he likes and then he sticks with that um, generally throughout his, throughout the series. He's, he doesn't really uh, pivot to other styles. However, the, the Wolf in the deck is pretty adjustable. I mean, you could take the same deck Erlu's got, swap Wolf with Boar and there you go. Um, but another thing too is the wolf might be a little bit of a play into Meek style, as Meek does not necessarily um, follow the meta too much. But I have seen Meek take the boar in previous matches, and by the way, Meek's been on fire this season. Um, I think that's something really important to to point out. I mean, guys like Erlu, Tatanka, Mishi, you know, you you expect them to be in the semifinals. If I if I Got in a time machine, and I went back a few months at the start of the se <laughs> start of the season, and I said to you, you know, hey, Erlu, Tataka, and Mishi are going to be in the semifinals. You'd be like, oh yeah, that makes sense. You didn't have to tell me that; I already knew it. But Meek being here is is a is a bit of a wild card. Um, I don't want to not give him enough credit. Again, Meek is a Premier League uh, champion. So we just need to see how this game goes. Both players opting to micro up, or macro up rather, for the time being. Uh, getting into some tier two here and some second farm. Scouting is very important in this stage of the game. Uh, you're really trying to look at how many farms the opponent is uh, saturating up on that second base. Make sure you're staying, um, staying in par with them on that or looking to punish that greed. And another thing to look for too is counting the tier two Warrens, looking for a tier three Warren. Uh, these are all kinds of things that the players need to keep their eyes out for right now. A lot of scouting patterns, yeah, are mostly concerned with the second base here. Be getting a really nice deep scout. Doesn't see too much. Erlu does throw down a Mole Warren at the front of his opponent's base. Maybe waiting for... Yeah, he's going to do a push out here. He's got his two cams. Uh, did Meek see that? Oh, no, but he saw the first Mole Warren back of the base, so he is prepping. He's getting his own moles out. Uh, but being a little greedy here with the triple tier 2, and Erlu did see double tier 2, and I think that's what triggered him to move out here. So here we go. Uh, big bust at the front door. Already getting pig damage here is Erlu. And this is just a, uh, a slaughter. Erlu still pushing forward, getting on top of the Warrens, and this might be a quick game. 
Uh, as Meek is going to try to desperately get his rallying reinforcements uh, to, to be able to handle this, but that's not going to do it. Shouldn't see a tap any second now. GG. Erlu taking game number one. And this is what I'm talking about with Erlu, man. Like, he, he noticed that uh, Meek was going for a little bit too greedy of a play. Uh, a little, a couple too many tier twos. And not only that, but also the Falcons. I mean, the Falcons are, are fantastic units, but... You know, in that very early game, I'd put my money on the Chameleons any day of the week. Uh, so, it's, uh, it's a tough one there. And, and again, I think that really highlights... Actually, I like that game a lot because I think it highlights a little bit of both... It highlights about both players what they're good at. You know, Meek with trying something different with the Fox Balloon. Uh, and Erlu just punishing the slightest bit of greed from his opponent. Um, 4-1 to Meek, says Tataka in chat. He's still a believer. Alright, let's see if Meek can win uh, four games in a row here. In the bottom, we have Meek uh, putting the snakes in. I think dropping the moles. Also grabbing Pigeon. And over on the bottom, Erlu with the skunk. Um, rather than the mine. So, little little adjustments here from both sides. Uh, I think Skunk is, is generally good against boar pushes. So maybe Erlu is trying to lean into thinking maybe Meek might consider taking the boar this game. How is this map looking? It's a little bit awkward. It's actually really awkward for Erlu. Um, well, okay. It's not as bad as it looks. This is a weird map. Let's start off with that. For one, we've got a really really far rush distance. So, unless Erlu tries something with moles, but that's not really his MO. Uh, we should have a pretty uh, traditional early game here. Um, now, I think Erlu should be able to take this base here and actually be just fine. I know this map looks really weird. The one thing, though, is both players can be bastards here with Falcons. Um, this this cliff is kind of abusable both ways with that, but I'm, I'm kind of envisioning Erlu setting up shop here, because if you look at the mini-map, there actually is no way that Meek can get through there. And Meek's probably not happy he dropped the balloons. This is a very great map for balloons. It's it's one, um, one attack path, right? You have to attack through here. This is, this is the only spot. Quick expansion for Meek. Uh, Erlu did scout it. And Meek probably just thinking, you know, he, he didn't see a, a, a big commitment yet from Erlu. Well, he did see one tier two, okay. He didn't see the double though, so. I don't think Erlu needs to overreact and try to, like, one base win. Because sometimes that's what you gotta do when the map gen's really against you and you just don't have a second base. You kind of just have to get in there and, and hope that you can, you know, win on one base. But I don't think that's the case for Erlu. I think he can expand here. He'd have a little bit long of a reinforcement line, but I, I think that'd be just fine. And then he'd even have this pocket third. Um, how much of the map? Okay, Erlu's got the full scout. Meek's got the full scout. He hasn't confirmed. When If I'm Meek, I might be like, ah, what if there's a mill right there, you know? So you might see him try to clean up that. Yeah, see, here you go. Erlu already trying the cliff abuse. He may be able to get in that little pocket. No, that's actually blocked off, so... Um, I think Erlu might have shown his hand a little bit early there. Meek now will probably be cautious about placing pigs right here. Doesn't look like he can quite get that falcon range. He'd have to move his commander over, but that'd be really risky. Like, move his commander up here and then rally. Yeah, I, I think Erlu kind of yeah, showed his hand a bit early there. Meek could have maybe not thought about that, built some pigs. you know. But then again, that is like hoping that your opponent makes a mistake. And Premier League semifinals, you know, they really, really shouldn't be. Um, Erlu not getting that deep scout, he really needs it. Because there is a Fox Warren down, which is going to absolutely devastate Erlu's composition. You know, I, I think the fox suffers in the current meta because the boar just kind of... Like, the fox is trying to poke over time and get value, but the boar just impacts the board so heavily that, you know, 
your your fox shooting a thing here and there is not going to matter when when the boar tanks like 100 damage, deals a ton of AOE damage, and then blows up all over your warrens. Um, but there is no boar for Erlu, so this fox is actually very very strong. The fox super hard counters the falcons. It does great against all the other tier two. Um, the only thing erlu has got against the fox is the wolf. Which, of course, with that movement speed buff, uh, negates the main uh, advantage the fox has of being being swift. So, the fox is bought and paid for now here for Meek. Second bases have been taken for both sides, but no farms just yet. So, this is going to be a fun game. Um, I always love when we kind of get to see the compositions that the players have in mind. Uh, of course, it's never fun, you know, when one player just grand slams and, and wins the game. I, I think my favorite match as a tooth and tail is where, like, both players kind of get to build the army that they're looking for, that they planned on, you know, and then they get to clash heads. Um, but then after that, after the army's trade, you know, players have to go home, start selling warrens, thinking about you know, what they can muster up for the next one, and then the farms start going down. Yeah, like, those scrappy games are always super hype. so... Fox is here, and Erlu is moving, getting ready to move out. I don't know, man. This is looking really good for Meek. I feel like this Fox is just gonna absolutely devastate. He's gonna go ahead and pick up this mill. I'm not sure if I like this too much, because Erlu can trap the army right now, but he does take out that mill so fast. He is able to get out of position. Oh god, I thought he was about to burrow home. No, he needs to start poking with his Fox. Erlu's seen it. Ooh, this is so dangerous, Meek! Oh god, he really wanted to queue that farm. Okay, didn't lose anything. Alright, here we go. Fox coming up. Gonna start poking things down. This mill will tank a little bit of damage. Oh my god, Erlu's commander went down to a fox shot. That is absolutely huge. Meek can just sit here and poke away. I'm actually surprised he didn't Hard engage a little bit more on that, but he gets so much value here. Oh man. Erlu really probably frustrated on that. Definitely uh, a misplay there from Erlu, more so than, than Meek doing something right. But I, I do think Meek handled that right. Yeah, if it was me, I might have jumped on the army a little bit more, but Meek was like, nope, you know, we get, get some free picks here, let's take them, let's not lose any units. And here we go, the big push coming in. Skunks on the side of Meek, uh, but a lot of cams on the side of Erlu, and the fox goes down. Erlu's army is just cleaning everything up. These chameleons, you know, four chameleons, man, on the front lines is so huge. A little bit of missed micro there for Meek, too. I don't know if he thought he was going to win that battle a little bit more, but he should have at least tried to save the fox there. Kind of just seemed like the fox died in the middle of the fray. Yeah. Yeah, I try not to be too harsh on players, but I mean, this, this is Premier League semifinals. This is a very uh, reasonable spot. See, I almost did it again. Why am I so bad with scoreboards, man? Erlu wins. Yeah, that, that that seemed like a little bit of a throw from Beak. I do agree. He, the, the micro was kind of non-existent in that last uh, last fight there. Yeah, I mean, he could have at least kept the fox alive, I think. Like, the cams... the cam, Erlu did have the better comp, but... Meek's whole composition was to, to bait. Like, Meek still had a lot of room to run back. Um, and, and kite towards the mill before he had to take the hard engage. Like, Meek want, wanted to delay the hard engage as long as he could. And he let Erlu just kind of pounce right on top of him and... You know, didn't didn't save the fox. All right, let's get into it though. Game number three. <clears throat> Erlu up two points in the bottom right. Meek, changing things up a little bit in the composition over on left hand side. Erlu, keeping with that core, but kind of flexing one position this time around. Going for the lizards, and Meek. Uh, I like this for Meek. Squirrel Mole Cam Falcon is so strong, you can kind of just have fun with your other two picks in a lot of cases. Uh, and this time around, I'm going for Owl uh, Balloon. So, 
really what Meek wants to do with this composition is turtle up on a few bases, get a really, really strong economy, and build just a ton of Owl Falcon. You know, three, four Owls. You know, one or two Owls really don't cut it nowadays. I mean, the cams and the moles are strong enough to... Oh, look at this, so Aerolue with the four farm double! And Meek actually did scout it. Look at me droning on about boring stuff like army composition when Aerolue's coming out here for blood. Good response though for Meek, he actually did scout this, uh, which is impressive because that was a good hide from Erlu to, to put them up there. But Meek probably noticed the food missing, looked around for him. But now six lizards come out, so he should be able to kill a pig. The moles are really smart, he gets an extra unit out here. And this mole squirrel will be good against this combi. Yeah, gets the pig, loses three lizards. Still worth it though. Um... Even though that was even food-wise, you know, killing pigs is always better than killing army because you interrupt the economy. And Erlu didn't lose so many lizards as a prompt and immediate counterattack from Meek. Okay, so we're going to go into a regular game from here. A little bit of no harm, no foul. Actually, Erlu's doubling down. And again, Meek with a great scout. Goes up there, checks the Warrens, does see that third tier one Warren before the eight farms finish up. Forcing Meek to follow suit, so. Meek does have a better late game. Well, uh, it's hard. I mean, Wolf Camp Falcon. Like, oof. If this really gets to a super late game where Erlu can sell all his tier one and just have, like, Cam Falcon Wolf. I mean, that's a really strong comp. But, at the same time, I mean... Meek can go Cam... Cam Falcon Owl. He's gonna have less cams, probably. I'm just trying to think of, like, hyper late game. Like, he probably has, like, three or four Owls. You know, trying to probably match Falcon count with Erlu. And then has less cams, right? But how hard is Meek going to really lean into the Owl life here? Is he going to try to take this game to 16 farms? Because that's the, the beauty of, of these cores here. Squirrel, Squirrel Mole Cam Falcon, you can see both players are running that. Uh, they have the liberty to do what they want with those other picks. And the Balloon... I think the Balloons could be okay here. Maybe a couple Balloons here. I mean, Erlu could still really run all the way around, but if he does that, he's going to have a hard retreat path. So yeah, I, I, my eye's kind of on Meek this game. I, I'm really interested to see how, when, and if he decides to run out this Owl Balloon composition. Pretty standard stuff on both sides, though. Right now, again, just scouting the second bases... Uh, looking for Warrens, looking for tier 2 count, looking for a sneaky tier 3. And look at this, Meek selling those farms right after uh, Erlu leaves. And I'm going to go for a push. He's, he's trying to bait Erlu into thinking he's safe after he just saw all those farms come down from Meek. And this actually might work. Well, Meek doesn't have the chameleons. He's got to go right now, though. I don't think he can wait for the next chameleon. Like, if he really wants this gambit to work, he's got to move. So, yeah, he's got one cam. But just a ton of squirrel mole here. Holy moly. Twelve moles. More coming up. I mean, he can just target that mill. He needs to go now. I don't think he should wait. This is tough, though. This is... I mean, this is going to make or break the game. He's probably waiting for the cam to catch up. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Target the mill. Knock that out. There you go. So even if Meek loses the fight, he still wins the war. He still knocked out that second base from Erlu. And look how fast those expansions just delete with moles. It's so it's so crazy on this patch. Good job keeping that cam alive, and Meek will retreat. The five minute mark just happened, so losing that second base is even worse. Meek up considerably in farms now. 
And Erlu is going to go for the counterattack, which makes sense. I think another option would maybe be to sell down and try to farm, but then you just leave yourself uh, susceptible to, to Meek attacking you again. So Erlu moving in. He might have enough here. Nah, I think Meek's just got it. So a nice victory here from Meek getting a point on the board in the classic tooth and tail mind game style. Shows a bunch of farms. Right when Erlu leaves, sells them, fills some moles, and uh, and yeah, I mean those second bases are just paper. We're, we've got paper mills here in this in this expansion or this patch. Oh man! And I pressed the wrong button, you guys. Sorry. I'm not giving you the quality. I'm too hard on myself. I make like a, a minor mistake, and I'm like, the stream's ruined. Okay. Meek on the board. Game number four. <laughs> All right, here we go. You're, you're getting your wish, Olive. Uh, Meek in the bottom, primed and ready uh, for some MG aggression. And up top, Erlu. Pivoting back to the mines here. With the flex pick. Um... How rushable is this map? I mean, maybe Meek can take this one? Uh, I think he'd prefer if this was like a little, like if this mill was like here, that would be ideal, I think. But this is the, the classic Meek, and starting with a 5 farm more and to already interrupt Erlu's plans, to already throw him off his comfort zone just slightly. This is such a wonky second base, too. Well, uh, no, okay, the commander can get through there. But look, the wall right here, like, this is a weird map for Meek. Yeah, this is a very good map for Erlu. I mean, we spawn in with three mills like this. I mean, you you, you write a you write an email to Andy Schatz and, and thank him personally. Oh, that mine kills the squirrel, okay. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just feel like this mill might be a little too close. Because I think Erlu's just going to bust you immediately when you try to take that. So, I guess this cabin is nice to try to set up the defenses. But the problem here is this big split in the middle. Because if Meek really starts going ham on, on the defense, Erlu's like, fine, I'll just attack this way. Whatever. Which means that Meek might have to pivot into not using the defenses at all. And that leaves this comp only with Squirrel Falcon. Unless he can somehow get out some early Owls. But trying to sneak out early tier 3 just doesn't happen on this patch. I mean, Moles are able to punish that too, too easily. So he's going to go for that cabin. So maybe he's thinking this will give him enough extra territory. But Erlu doesn't necessarily know. That's one thing that's fun about Tooth and Tail, especially when you're switching up your deck like this. You know, Erlu has no idea what's in Meek's deck. He only knows that there's squirrels. So, Erlu should not really be thinking that there is defenses. However, Squirrel Mole is better than just Squirrel, and he's going to come in here and deny that cabin. That's 60 free food for Erlu. Meek hunkering down here with some turrets. Erlu does see those. It's gonna move in anyways. I don't know, three turrets is a lot, man. Even against the moles. One Warren does go down, but those turrets are absolutely shredding Erlu's army. Me taking a big win right there. He really needed that. Now, I guess do you sell off the turrets and try to take the cabin again? Oh, Meek really wants it. He's trying to bring this all the way to the base, but realizes he's being a little bit a little bit too crazy. Comes back. Yeah, he's got a lot of money. He's thinking about what to do. He's going to take the cabin. He needs more Squirrel Warrens. They just throw down... Yeah, you got to go up to like 15, 18 Squirrels, right? He does want to put them in a position to protect the turrets. Yeah, 18 Squirrels makes sense, I think. Because he's already got this money invested in the turrets here. He can just piggyback these forward. Or leapfrog, I should say. Once this uh, cabin gets done. Or campfire.
All right, so there we go. Territory has been extended. Meek can now move his defenses forward. Is he gonna go for the artillery? There, oh no, there's balloon first, okay. So this is kind of like the dressing for the ar artillery. This is, this is defrosting the meat before you put it in the oven here. But again, I'm, I'm worried for Meek because there's this other attack path. Like, Aralu can just say, okay, lol. And move her across the other side of the map. And that's a risk that you always take when you when you try to do defense decks. Look at this. Great scouting from Erlu. Sees the uh, ninja base there from Meek. Not really a ninja base though, I guess. If Meek is really planting his feet over here. This does actually make sense. Because this kind of negates this other attack path. Erlu can still attack this way. To try to fight the, the main, but then if Meek identifies that, he can just base race. And I think Meek wins that base race because he's got the extra cabins. This was super smart for Meek to take this base. Because now his defense is defending that. Erlu is going to just move out, though, with the Chameleons. This is going to be rough for Meek. Oh my god, if Erlu snipes that Warren, the Owl Warren with those cams. Here we go, watch this, you guys. Watch this. Here he comes. Oh, here it is. Oh, no. Oh, oh. Okay, me gets, gets back and sells it. Super smart there for Meek. He knows what Erlu's commander is up to. He knows that there's camps. And he's going to just use this as an opportunity to move forward. But I don't know. erlu has got a lot of, like, squirrel mole of the house. And these camps are just cleaning up shop in the meantime. Oh my god, absolute disaster here for Meek. The minefield cleaning up the squirrels as well. And the cams are still wrecking havoc. And the main base, these cams. Killed the main mill, killed so many warrens, and here comes Erlu. Right when Meek steps out of position to clean up those chameleons. He's gonna get on top of all these turrets. Yeah, moles just really make turrets hard this patch. Moles just make everything hard this patch. This, this patch is just moles. That's really what this is. <laughs> Erlu takes game number three here. Or game four, I should say. That's one thing, and I know it's easier said than done, but I would really like to see MGs somehow be effective against moles. I don't know what that looks like. Because I feel like the MG, like, the whole point of the MG is to be anti-tier 1. But the mole's good against that, too. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, like, take structure crit away from moles on the turrets. But I understand how that doesn't make sense thematically. Because that's, like, the whole point of the mole is the structure crit. Alright. <laughs> okay, here we go. Game number 5 here. Moles have always been kind of the defining unit of this game, though. In the top, we've got Meek. And in the bottom right, Erlu. All right, Meek, you know, cleaning up his act here. He's getting a day job. He, he's, he's taking community college at night. He's running the meta. He's got the boar. He, he's, he's not messing around anymore. He's starting to get a little bit behind in this series. And Erlu's on match point here. So Meek can't mess around anymore. This makes sense. Meek's like, you know what, man? I'm just going to play a straight-up game of Tooth and Tail. We're gonna get the moles, we're gonna get the cams, we're gonna do a boar push. We're, we're not gonna do anything crazy this game. So this is the matchup that I I, I think really um, defines the current state of the game. You know, I, I wanna see Meek win this so he can go to more games here. And map score doesn't matter anymore. I mean, we're at the semifinals, so whoever wins this will go up against the winner at Tataka for Samishi. Definitely check that out on twitch.tv slash Tandor Draco if you haven't seen it already. Great series. I don't want to spoil it. Um, yeah, I, I'm curious if Erlu can hold this off with a wolf. And I think Meek just needs to play. Super standard, man. Don't take any risks. You know, do the whole half sad on the, on the natural. And this in tier 2, and this in tier 3. Sells the... Oh my god, he sold it right in front of Erlu's face. He thinks he's being sneaky, but Erlu was being sneaky up here on the side ground. So Erlu knows 
Meek is not going for an expansion. And I think he's trying to mind games Meek with that cam. No, he's going to keep it. Maybe he just wasn't that threatened by the, mul the single mole warrant. That makes sense. Because this is a very defendable spot for Marilu, this main base here. This is a really weird map. Um, I kind of, uh, kind of, I'm not sure what I like it better for. This this high ground in the middle feels like it could be abused for both sides, but Erlu pushing in here onto one of these bases is going to be huge from this high ground. Not only that, but erlu has got this little fortified moat around his main base, which is really nice. And then Erlu's also got a little bit more of the option to take like a ninja base over here in the 6 o'clock or something. Oh, we sold the mill in response to Mole Warren. Oh, okay. I, did, I didn't see I did see the Mole Warren from Erlu, but I didn't see that Meek saw it. So that makes more sense. So we're stuck in a little bit of one base chicken here. Which kind of makes sense for this map. Again, like this high ground in the middle is really abusable. So I think both sides are a little bit scared to invest into an expansion. You know, this isn't actually that bad of a of a ninja base here for Meek, to be honest. I don't like the position if you just look on the mini-map, but I actually really like the uh, the terrain around it, the wall. So hold up, Erlu's moving out here. He's going to plant his flag in this war zone in the center, get his mill up. He's got some nice mines here. This is actually kind of a cool map. It's it's kind of balanced in a in a wonky way. Me go for the boar. I don't think Meek really cut corners though, so I think this is a pretty safe boar. Like Erlu's only ahead three moles, especially because Erlu did things like invested in mines and invested in the mill. I'm keeping the vision on Erlu here because he really needs to see this this spore worm, but he's checking around for ninja bases, doesn't see anything. This is a really safe way to get out of boar on one base. Meek's not messing around, trying to get falcons, trying to get, you know, campfire or anything. And Erlu's gonna see the spore, but I don't think there's anything he can do about it. I think Erlu's actually got a smaller standing army. 912. No, he's actually got a little bit more. He has been building a lot of moles recently. So many moles. Good lord. But I... Don't, I don't know. I don't think Erlu can just Barbarian in. Meek needs to be in a better position, though. Erlu's gonna go for it. Meek does have a few pigeons here to help uh, a little bit of sustain. Yeah, and Meek holds this. Yeah, that's what I thought. Erlu did not have a big enough army advantage. And Erlu's just gonna tap. Oh, no, he's not. I think he thought about it. He knows the boar's on the way. But why tap, you know? Honestly. That was a, a big punch to the face of Erlu, but he's not... He didn't hear no bell, you know? He, he's got one more fight in him, but it's not looking good. Here comes Meek to end this one out. That was a masterclass for Meek, I think, on how to safely get out of board. That was very... I'm actually really impressed with that. Just the, the patience and uh, the conservatism there. On really making sure, you know, he didn't cut any corners. He didn't give Erlu the opportunity to attack. And then when, when Erlu scouted that boar, he realized, I mean, he scouted it so late, he couldn't get his own tier 3, didn't really have time to try to build falcons or anything, so he's like, I gotta try to come in here and do something, but since Meek was so safe about that boar, uh, there's nothing Erlu could do. So here we go. Game number 6. It really, there. what Erlu could have done is scouted the boar faster. Erlu actually spent a lot of time checking for ninjas and stuff when he needed to find that boar. On the right hand side, Meek, same deck, and over on the left, Erlu dropping the mines for the skunk. Again, the skunk is theory crafted to be the way that this wolf style handles the boar. Um, but yeah, so far, great series. I think Meek fumbled the ball in game number two. 
the Fox game. I, I think <clears throat> I think that was the only game that wasn't that great, to be honest. <laughs> but the rest of them have been fantastic, so. Not a whole lot going on yet. Uh, six farm, Warren from Meek. Erlu will scout that. Probably, yeah, I'll throw down a seven farm Warren, but he's probably not worried about it. Yeah, even going for an eight farm. This is, a, actually I like that decision for the eight farm a lot. This is such a big map. The rush distance uh, is gonna be fine. And look at this, pretty balanced map to be honest. I don't think either side can complain. They've got two expansions here in their front yard, and then they've kind of got a third expansion north or south so very very good rng uh for such an important game erlu is uh gonna threaten to punish a little bit of mixed greed selling off a of warren reselling it to get some faster farms but actually sells off that uh those moles there and it goes into some skunks so erlu might try to go for a pretty solid uh Squirrel Mold Push backed up by Skunks. We'll see. Some more. Oh my god, Erlu. Really taking advantage of the high ground around the opponent's base. That is the one ba bad side here for Meek on this RNG, is you never want your base in the low ground like this, because Meek doesn't have vision up there right now. Oh, and he scouts it though! Okay, very good. Erlu's got to get out of here. Try and be a sneaky boy. I'm, I'm really glad he scouted it. That would have been a crappy way for the game to end. Just goes in there and gets the tier two warrant for free. But I think that the reason I still consider this map relatively balanced is it's large enough to where it looks like it might be a two or three base game. And then also when Meek starts crawling out a little bit and making the front lines a little bit more like right here, this abusable terrain around his base no longer really matters. So Meek moving out with a cam. Um just gonna park it for now. That's dangerous though. He needs to pull that back if he's not gonna micro it. If air lose units moved up, they could probably kill it. And me gonna go for a farm kill here? No? Okay, yeah, he's just gonna go home. This is a very tense moment in the game. Scouting is absolutely critical here. Identify the tech your opponent's going for. Identify how many farms. And it's like, everything's still even, you know? So both players are kind of probing one another for weakness here. Looking for any opportunities. <clears throat> and defender's advantage is still a thing, so... You know, if both players are even, and then one attacks the other one, the defender has an advantage. In some situations. I guess it's a little more complicated with that, with moles being as strong as they are. Look at Erlu with the Chad scout here, does see the boar. And he scouts it pretty early. He doesn't know how far along it is, but he knows it's still in the Warren is building phase and not in the boar is being produced phase. Uh, so I'm a little bit surprised he doesn't want to go for a wolf. He probably would have had time. Maybe not. This is probably safer. Yeah, the only thing that makes me hesitant about the defender's advantage is just how strong moles are, because they kill mills and they kill warrens just so fast that you could argue there is an offender's advantage of being like, well, we trade armies, but I killed a few of your, your warrens and stuff. Okay, they're going to try to go in, try to uh, take this engagement before the boar is on the field. And so far, so good. This is looking very bad for Meek. Erlu winding that fight hand over fist. Uh, the boar is still too far out. 15 moles for Erlu here, maximum. And it looks like we're going to have an Erlu versus Tatanka finals. Oh, no, I spoiled the finals. I was doing so good about not spoiling it all video. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, everybody, if you haven't seen. But it will be Erlu versus Tatanka here uh, for the grand finals of the Premier League. Meek trying to make some magic happen with this boar. 
but it's not gonna be man I'm so mad at myself I was doing so good all video not spoiling that and then right here at the end I spoil it sorry everybody I failed you but now that I've said it now that now that the cat's out of the bagel now as the saying definitely goes it will be Erlu versus Tataka and th that will be the grand final. Stay tuned. Uh, it's not scheduled yet. Um, so we don't really know when and where it's happening. Uh, it could be, I imagine, um, it'll probably try to get the players to play live. I imagine it'll probably be a weekend. So maybe next weekend, maybe the weekend after. I'm not, I'm not so sure. Uh, but great series here. And I think Erlu and Tatanka are both in really good shape. Who did I? I think I predicted. How did I do on my predictions? I think I predicted Mishi, because I'm kind of a Mishi fanboy, let's be honest. Uh, so stay tuned to the Discord um, for information on when the Grand Finals will be. I'm sure uh, once Tanner Draco gets that all sorted out, he will do an announcement. Okay, I said Erlu 4-2 and I said Mishi 4-3. Hey, I nailed Erlu 4-2. Called that one. Uh, so anyways, thanks everybody. It's always a pleasure. I always enjoy hanging out with y'all. Thanks for letting me still be part of the community and, uh, and cast these games. I really, really have a good time. Uh, and that's it. Yeah, keep your eyes on the Discord for other uh, streamers uh, announcing when they're going live, covering... Uh, some of the other leagues here and stay tuned for announcements on the grand finals maybe i'll maybe i'll ping the pocket watch server with my super special powers let everybody know what's going to happen see if we can get a good turnout all right enjoy the rest of your weekend take care everybody peace